Hi everybody, welcome back to Charming Data. Today we are going to learn how to plot over a million data points and a million rows onto Plotly scatter map box. We're going to do that with Plotly and with Data Shader that combined together will allow us to create these kind of data points and maps from um, um, over one giga um, data sets. Now, um, we're going to data shader. What's special with data shader is that it's designed to aggregate data sets into regular grids that can be viewed as images as opposed to Plotly. It doesn't plot every single data point. It just plots um, the pixelated uh, images onto the map. Um, in order to follow along, what I would recommend is go into um, this uh, GitHub that I'm going to put under the video and just download both Python files and the data from my Google Drive um, in order to um, be able to run the same script and create the same maps. If you don't want to run the script along with me, that's completely fine. I'm just going to show you how to, under 50 lines of code, how to create these beautiful maps with Plotly and Data Shader. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, let's say you download the data, or maybe skip that, um, open your Python file. We are going to open Chicago Shader first, and I'm going to go along, I'm going to explain this and explain every row so you know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, so the first thing you want to do is obviously uh, you want to import or, or um, install these libraries into your um, terminal or into your computer if you don't have them. These are really three libraries. These are um, pip install uh, pandas. And once you install pandas, pip install plotly. And after you install plotly, just pip install data shader right here. Okay. Once you install data shader, Oops, pip install, well, you get it. Once you install the uh, data shader, um, you're ready to go. And then you import these libraries right here. And then the, this set, um, you know what, before I even go over this, let's try and run this right now. Let's save it and run the Chicago. And you'll see while I'm explaining how this is going to come up. Um, between this line of code and this line of code, what I'm doing is I'm going to read the, the data into a pandas data frame. And then I'm going to filter it a little bit. So this data, the crimes 2001 that you might have downloaded from, from my um, Google Drive, make sure this in the same folder as the Python file. Everything has to be in the same folder. I'm going to read it into a pandas data frame. And then we're going to take only these three columns. We're only going to take three columns because we don't need the rest 2024. Oh, let me see, it just loaded. You see, it just loaded all these um, crimes that are considered prostitution by Chicago police in Chicago. Okay, so how is it doing this? Um, we're downloading these three columns. Um, we're just going to print the unique so we see what, what the unique values are in this column. And then I already know what the unique values are. There's some prostitution, drugs, narcotics. I'm only going to take um, prostitution. So I'm going to take from this column, I'm going to filter the data frame so only the pro rows with prostitution in them are, is in the data frame. So it's going to be a smaller data frame. And then I'm going to drop, this is very important, you have to drop latitudes and longitudes that are empty. If you have rows with empty values in, in these columns, then you have to drop them or it's not going to work on your map. And then I'm just going to print the shape so you see how it looks like. The next thing here on row 18, we're going to build an abstract canvas. So to plot everything we're using Plotly and Data Shader, you have to take Data Shader DS canvas data shader I see right here and you have to plot just a, a build an abstract canvas this is going to be only a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high and then um, you want to project these um, longitude and latitude points onto the the canvas that we just built okay and this is how you project project it and now what we're going to do when once this is done what you're actually creating is this AGGS is an X array. If you want to read more about X array, just go into here. Now, once we have the X array, we want to make sure to um, um, extract the latitudes and, and um, longitude um, uh, values uh, because we have to build the corners of the map. So this is the corners of the image that we're going to create. So you see, we have four lists here. There is uh, one, 
two latitude, one latitude, one longitude in this list, and then same in this list, and there's four lists, and each list represents a corner. Um, and the corner referred to this right here, one corner here, latitude, latitude, one here, one here, and one last one right here. So you have to make sure you create this. You don't really have to understand all of this. You can just pretty much copy paste. That's completely fine. Um, this section right here. Because in the coordinates, you'll see at the very bottom, we actually put them right here at the very bottom. Okay. So we, we create this um, corners of the image um, that we're going to plot. And then we have to um, set the color and the how of the of the um, of the image that we're going to to plot onto the scatter map box so here you ch you take the aggs this is the x array that we created all the points you put that into the tf.shade here and we're going to choose c map we're going to choose the color fire this fire comes from right here from color set import fire there's several other um, colors and soon in a minute we're going to see how to use the other colors so I'm going to put fire in here and how is going to be um, EQ hist, right? So this is percentile. There are three options. There's logarithmic and then there's linear. I tried linear logarithmic. It doesn't look as good. So, but you can try it on your own and see how it works out for you. We're just going to use um, the percentile method. All right. I'll explain this in a minute. So we have, we have our image and now what we're going to do this image, like the coordinates, like the ones right here, all we have to do is, is put them inside our, our layout of the scatter map box that we're creating. So the next thing to do is create a, a Poly Express scatter map, map box. And this is, you're just putting one point on it. You're just creating a scatter map box. You're not gonna plot all the points. You're just plotting one point. So this map box is created. One latitude, one longitude, and this is the first data point in the data frame. And now that you have your scatter map box, now you can actually overlay the image that we created above right here and the coordinates source type image as well. Overlay this onto the layout of the scatter map box with one value. All right. So this doesn't change either. You can pretty much copy paste it for every single uh, map that you want to create. Um, which is cool because a lot of this is just copy paste. All you really have to do when you do your own data is change the, um, filter the data here and make sure that you change, um, you spell the longitude and latitude correctly. Okay, so let's see what happens. We ran this and when we ran this, we had this that came up, right? This Chicago, these are the um, uh, places where Chicago police <clears throat> uh, categorize this crime as prostitution. So you see here, um, if we zoom in, you see this is a really hot spot of prostitution, a lot of uh, prostitution going on there, according to the police, and a lot going on in here, um, but less so in <clears throat> outside, of the, outside of the city. The further you go, the less prostitution, I guess, especially up north. Okay, now we can also plot this in the color blue or in the color uh, purple. And to do that, uh, you don't really call it blue and purple. What they call it in the four, where is it? Um, color set is KBC and BMW. So where did I get these from? I'm going to add this below the video so you see. This comes from this um, link below the video. This is all the category, not all, but a sample of the categories of the color set. Um, and I'll take the linear sample because it just makes sense um, for this map. Um, it's You see the left ones, BGY, BGYW, KBC, BMW, Blues, so I'll use gray in the next map. So just take one of these, the first one on the left, any one of these that you see, and you can um, import it on top here and then just change the color right here. In the TF shade, just change the color right here that you want, that you imported. All right, this will allow you to create the blue and the, uh, the purple instead of the hot um, fire colors. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot narcotics. Um, if I did not say already, this data comes from um, crimes in New York City. Well, I, I put it in my um, uh, Google Docs, the Google Drive, but it actually came from here. It's a subset. I don't think it's all the data. It came from the 2001 to 2000 um, to present to 2020 crimes. And this is all the data, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I know that there's also narcotics. Let's see. We, I play, you see where I put here? DFF um, primary type unique. So I want to see you in this data set what kind of um, crimes I have. I only have these crimes. You see down here, 
only these crimes are the ones that I have in my data frame because again, I took only part of the data from Chicago, only these crimes. So now let's plot narcotics. Before we plot a prostitution, let's plot narcotics. See what happens if I run it right now. Play, run. And you'll see that because the image right here is a thousand over a thousand um, uh, pixels, the canvas, it will come up blurry. It's going to come up as soon as it loads like this, right? Because there's just oversaturation. There's a lot, a lot of data points in the same area. I think it's over 100,000 data points in the same area, so it, it becomes saturated. When this happens, one thing that you can do is the following. Let's see, it's loading, so it's going to create the soon, the map. Um, oh, so I just created it. You'll see of the map in a second. When that happens, when it creates this kind of oversaturation, what you can do is you can lower the highlight or the, the strength of the color by using alpha. If you use alpha right here, lower it to let's say um, 50 and then run it again, you will get this type of, uh, of map instead of this type of map. But let's say you want a higher resolution, what worked for me, and you can do as well, is let's bring this back to 255. You can put this as um, 5,000 or maybe even 4,000. Yeah, 5,000. Uh, oops, yeah, 4,000. And let's save it and let's run it again. You see here, um, once this is run and the script is finished, you'll see that it will load. It will load this. You see, so you see the difference between this one and this one. This is just a canvas, a little bit uh, more pixels on width and height, and then it allows a little bit more um, better visualization of which neighborhoods have um, high narcotics. At least Chicago police um, say there's crimes of high narcotics. So um, here there's not a lot of narcotic crimes, uh, but obviously you can see here a lot of white. So again, there's a lot of um, crimes around here and less so, less so here. This is a really white, white area, so pretty, pretty high narcotics. Okay, oh, I just uploaded the picture again that we just ran. We did it in fire instead of purple, so you'll see the same thing, but in fire, you see? Pretty neat. And this is pixels that are um, 4,000 height, and the canvas is 4,000 height and 4,000 width. Perfect. So we did that. Let's see what's next. We did this, we did this. Next is New York City. Okay, so to go to New York City, just go to the other, um, the oops, the other uh, Python file, the NYC shader. This you need the same the the uh, 1.5 gigabyte um, CSV document, which is a 311 service request, which is going to be right um, here, okay, in the same folder. Make sure I did it in this. I called it the same. Oh, in yeah. Good. In the Google folder, I call it the same. Perfect. So we have the request. It's in the same folder. We're reading it. This is the same thing I did with the Chicago crimes. Exactly the same. Well, almost the same. I'm just calling the data into a pandas data frame and then I'm just filtering it. I want this um, columns in there. Um, I don't think I even need status. And then I'm only going to take these two um, types of um, uh, values inside um, this column. So I'm going to take the column complaint type. I'm going to say only give me those rows, filter the data. So I only have rows with this types, right? Anything else, any other type of um, um, 311 call complaining about drugs or, or rodents or whatever is not going to be in there. It's only going to be noise, commercial noise and hot water problems. So my data frame is going to be a bit smaller, probably just a million rows instead of 5 million. And then this is very, very important. You have to categorize pandas categorical, your complaint type. Well, you, you'll see why we do this later. Okay. And now same thing. I'm going to plot everything onto um, a four by 4,000 by 4,000 um, pixels. Same thing here. I'm plotting the point, I'm creating the canvas. I'm plotting, plotting the points on the canvas. And then this is for the corners of the image. So I have a, um, a clear image in the background um, and the size of it. And then I'm going to plot the gray color. Okay. And I'm going to use the same percentile, um, percentile uh, method. Run. Let's run the NYC shelter. And here I'm also doing exactly the same. Okay. Perfect. So I just uh, ran it. It just up. Uh, 
Perfect. So here's our new map. This is in gray over, over a black background. And you can see that we all this data points are um, commercial noise complaints and complaints of hot water that is missing. So obviously this seems like a um, there's a high area here of either a hot, a hot water complaints or commercial noise. Now it's hard to say which is which. So now we're actually going to create this map. I'm going to show you how to change the code so you can actually categorize those complaints that are hot water and differentiate between hot water and um, noise complaints that are commercial. So to do that, go back into the code here and let's see, let's do this together. First of all, this is a good, actually a good break. If you, if you really liked the tutorial up until now, if uh, you feel you benefited from it, I welcome you to join my charming data um, uh, patron community. Um, you'll see a bunch of trick, uh, uh, tips and tricks regarding Dash and Plotly, and it just it just helps me as a uh, individual creator create more of these um, uh, time consuming and resource intense um, tutorials for you. So, um, hope hope to see you there. Okay, so let's do it. Um, let us create this map right here. Okay, so to differentiate between the two categories, what we have to do is first of all create a color key. So right, let's take this right here. It's in the bottom. You won't see this in the tutorial just for so I don't forget. Put this here color key and we're going to say the heat hot water is going to be aqua color and the noise commercial is going to be fuchsia, that purple color. And then take right here um, this part and we're going to put this right here under the um, um, points section we're going to do this comma and we're going to we're going to do a count cate category of the complaint type if you want to read a little bit more about what this means or how to do this uh, this also link is going to be under the uh, video just go into the data shader um, api and here you can go into the um, the count category right here and you'll see a little bit more about it especially if you click on the source Okay, so you put the count category, you, you put DS count get, and you put the column name, complaint type. And then the last thing you have to do, only one last thing, is this right here. So I'm going to just leave it here just to see the difference. Um, what we have to do is this is the same as this exactly, but we have to, the only difference is that we're adding a color key. Okay, so let me just delete this. And we're going to put color key here. Perfect. So we added the color key to the parameter. We're adding the color key um, object or variable, which you created above here, right? The heat is aqua and the noise is uh, purple fuchsia. Probably not saying that correctly. Oh, you don't really need this. You can actually erase this. Doesn't matter right now. And uh, and that's it. And, and if everything, all the rest is the same. Remember to also put this right here um, inside the CVS um, points, okay? Let's see what happens. Perfect. So I just plotted it, and you can see that we have we're plotting a million and two hundred and and twelve thousand um, rows or data points, and it created this plot right here. Let's zoom back out, and you can see that the aqua, which was um, heat and uh, hot water complaints, are in in aqua color, and then the purple ones are the commercial noise. So obviously here, downtown New York, um, Times uh, Time Square, the financial district, a lot of commercial noise, a lot of construction, a lot of building. Um, while here, you don't have a lot of either. You don't have commercial noise, you don't have hot water problems. This is mainly offices inside New York City. So that is it. Um, Staten Island, I was like the outer girls as well. Anyway, so that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you benefited from this tutorial that you learn how to uh, plot many, many data points onto, onto um, a Plotly scatter uh, map box. Um, if you did, hit the like button, um, subscribe below, and turn on your notifications. So every week you'll get notified of a new video about Plotly and Dash and, and um, uh, analytic web apps in Python. And um, I hope you have a good week.